They were joyriding cars. There was drug addiction. I couldn't say no. But I didn't believe my daughter wouldn't do that. Shoplifting and robbing, stealing. I didn't believe that my children would do that, especially Julie. I just felt a deep sense of hopelessness that I didn't really care anymore. Hopeless in heroin addiction, she was able to break free. Welcome to Treasures. Since 1967, Victory Outreach has been reaching out into the inner cities of the world. And I have seen thousands upon thousands set free from drug abuse. Drug abuse in the country of Ireland is out of control. It has become one of Ireland's major problems. The number of drug addicts, specifically heroin and methadone users, has skyrocketed over the last few years. Many of these addicts are losing their lives. Some are even committing suicide because they can't seem to find a way out of their addiction. A recent study shows that Ireland has the third highest rate when it comes to drug-related deaths in all of Europe. Many of these deaths come from overdoses of heroin. As of now, Ireland has the greatest number of heroin users in all of Europe. Statistics show that seven out of every thousand people in Ireland are heroin addicts. It also has been found that of these heroin addicts, 75% are also addicted to other drugs. It has become an evil cycle of drug abuse and many addicts cannot walk away from this life of bondage. The young people in Ireland who are abusing drugs are in dire need. Many of the drug addicts walking the streets don't believe that there's hope for them. Society has even given up on them by simply accepting the fact that they may never change. But we know that there is hope, the same hope that Julie Martin O'Toole came to find. You know, this is my old stomping ground where I used to, you know, run crazy and take drugs and hang out. And, um, you know, just be wild where, you know, I, I had no purpose, I had no, um, no, nothing to fight for, so I was just a wild horse doing whatever. My name is Julie Martin, and I've been saved 18 years. I grew up in a place in Dublin City called Sheriff Street. I grew up with three sisters and four brothers. My parents lived in like the projects, like flats, and we were very, very close in the family. Um, all of us growing up together, we played together, we went to school together. So we had a great, great family life, a great, great upbringing. I'm Mary O'Toole and Julie is my daughter. Julie was a bit of a shy girl, but loved football. But always, always up to doing games and always real sporty and, you know, she had a good childhood, Julie, when she was young. Well, the area that I lived in, uh, it was a, a bad area as well. I had a lot of drug addiction, I had a lot of crime and I had a lot of antisocial behaviour. And I always remember as a kid, my parents telling me, don't go to Sheriff Street, don't go out there, stay away from there, stay where we can see it. But, you know, I had to go out and see why they weren't telling me not to go. I noticed Julie staying out and not listening to what I was telling her. So obviously I said, I won't say that, and I just let her go for the time being, because she was in that age, you know, 14, 15, when you want to think you can do what you like. 
and in the environment that we were living where we live in Sheriff Street, there wasn't really much drugs, but there was an awful lot of alcohol. There was drugs, but I didn't know anything about drugs, and I did any of my family. It was Sheriff Street, it was basically a street where you could do what you liked. There was, um, they were joyriding cars, there was drug addiction, there was music, there was dancing, and it was like a life. There was people hanging on corners, hanging around on corners, so that's the way the street was. And I was at a house party, and I remember sitting there, we were just drinking and smoking marijuana and, you know, having, I guess, you know, fun. That's what I thought. And I remember coming around the room, and I was watching it as it was going around the room. And I, um, when it came to me, I couldn't say no, so I took it. And that was the first time I ever took heroin. Well, people used to tell me, but I didn't believe it. I said, my daughter wouldn't do that. Every weekend when I would take ecstasy and cocaine, I would take heroin to make myself come down off them, them high drugs. But it made me feel, you know, real tired and drowsy. And it made me forget everything. Yeah, I got arrested for, to feed my habit when I, when I got addicted to heroin. I was um, shoplifting and robbing, stealing. And I kept, people telling me she was uptown and she was shoplifting and stealing this and this. So I know not my duty, but everything told me was true. But I had to see it for myself. I was very young, I was 17. I didn't know what I was going into. When I, when I came from court in the van to the prison, I didn't know where I was going or what it was like. But when I got there, it was, it was just a horrible ex experience. I had to strip naked and ha take a shower and, you know, I was mixed in with a lot of other criminals, like I was mixed in with murderers and, you know, it was just horrible. That was one of the, the worst days of my life. I, I was gripped with fear. I got arrested a number of times. Well, every second person in the inner city you talk to is either addicted to heroin, addicted to crack, or on a methadone program. And the government's answer to, to drug addiction is put them on methadone, which is a substitute for heroin. The towers right there, these towers, when drug addiction hit Ireland, it came here in the 70s. And these towers right here, a lot of drug addicts turned themselves off these towers. They committed suicide, but it was all drug related. And right now, they're, they're, there's nobody living in them, but an awful lot of people lost their lives from drug addiction, from throwing themselves off them towers through suicide. Every drug addict is not given an opportunity to, to get their lives back. They're given an opportunity to be stable and be on methadone for the rest of their life. So you could imagine the hopelessness, the, the all lost, you know, of no future, you know, nowhere to go, you know, no purpose. Well, we're from the north side of Dublin and we live in the north side of Dublin. And I just love, the, not that I don't love any, I love all of Dublin, but the north side of Dublin has been affected so much by drug addiction. When they put up the tree, the people go and put their pictures of their family, their lost loved ones to drug addiction. And that burdens my heart, you know. So the drug addiction on the north side of, of Dublin is rampant. It's been, it has destroyed so many families. It's put so many good men and women in graves. This tree right here is from people that have died from drug addiction in the inner city. They put it up for the families that have lost loved ones and they come every year on the 7th of December. They put their picture of their lost loved ones on the tree. They light the tree up, but it's basically for the people that has lost their lives. And I know for sure if Jesus didn't come and change my life, my family would be coming on the 7th of December, putting my picture on that tree, remembering me from dying from an overdose from drug addiction. Julie began to sink deeper into her addiction. 
yeah, it, it, it took control of my life. I didn't know I was going to take control of my life, but I thought I was in control. But when I wanted to stop, I couldn't stop. That's when I knew this has control of my life, and I just lost, you know, I lost all sense of of hope. You know, I lost all sense of I'm trapped. You know, that's where I felt like I was trapped. And then I found needles, spoons in my bedroom, and then I knew. My lowest point was about three three weeks before I came to Victory Outreach. I remember sitting on some stairs in the inner city thinking, there's no way out for me, there's no hope for me. What's my life come to, what am I going to do? So I was on a methadone program and it was the weekend and on the methadone programs you get takeaways, you can bring your methadone home with you. So I remember sitting on them stairs right across from the methadone clinic and I drank my whole take, my weekend takings of my methadone. Didn't, I, I didn't want to OD, I didn't want to kill myself. I just felt a deep sense of hopelessness that I didn't really care anymore. I always felt trapped because I looked at people around me and I looked at the way they were getting their lives. Their lives were going good, they were going to school. You know, they were getting on with their lives, they were doing things with their lives, but I wasn't. I always felt like, I don't want this life. Why is my life like this? How come my life is like this? Why is my life not like their life? And I would feel, you know, in my mind, in my heart, my soul, I, I really want to change. I just didn't know how to change or I didn't know how to ask for help. But there'd be nights where I would really, you know, I'd cry and say, God, I don't want this life. Please take me. And I think for somebody to say that, that's, you know, where you're really at the end of the end. You know, you couldn't go any further into the ground. And it's so sad because I was only, you know, I was only 20, 22 years of age. Well, my, my mother, Mary, my mum's name, Mary, she came to Victory Outreach looking for help. For, we, we had four heroin addicts in my family and she came looking for help. She was desperate. Nobody wanted to help. The clinics, methadone clinics couldn't help. The doctors couldn't help. The psychiatrists couldn't help. The prisons couldn't help. And she came looking for help. And she had asked members from Victory Outreach to come and visit our home and come and pray for her drug addict kids. Well, the enemy took a lot. He took one thing he took. He took my relationship with my parents away. I was afraid of her. Oh, yeah, Julie got a bit be violent, if she didn't get our money for our drugs. And... Because we, through my drug addiction, they were trying to deal with my drug addiction and my siblings' drug addiction. Because I couldn't handle her, just couldn't handle her anymore. And then I had another three on heroin, so it was all crazy. So it separated us. So I would go missing for days and, you know, they wouldn't see me. I wouldn't call or I wouldn't, you know, you know, answer them or I would just go and do my own thing, so. It was like someone took something out of my heart and my heart just broke, you know, and I couldn't believe, even though she's okay now, I couldn't believe that my children do that, especially Julie, you know. My relationship with my parents broke down because I knew I was causing devastation to, to my family. Very, very bad, she owed it. And she, our friends left her to die. But it was God's grace that she's alive. We, we took her out of the hospital, but she still wouldn't listen. She said, continue taking it, continue taking it. I was walking up Talbot Street, and I met a man named Steve Woolwich. And he said, we can help your daughter. So I know you can't help my daughter. She's on heroin. And he said, but we can't wear a victory out. He said, I never heard them. He said, well, just come up to the church. It's in Talbot Street. And I brought Julie up. Finally, we got her there, but she ended up in the women's home in London. I went to a women's recovery home in London, England. And I remember walking in, not knowing what I was getting myself into or not, not knowing what I was doing. 
I just wanted to be normal. I just wanted to be clean. And I remember the girl, the, one of the staff there, told me, Julie, just repeat this prayer and give your life to the Lord and everything is going to be okay. And when I repeated that prayer, when I accepted Jesus into my life, I felt the heaviness, the burden, what I was carrying around for so many years, I felt that lifted. I felt inside there was chains broken. You know, I was free from addiction. And I seen her, and I couldn't believe it was my Julie. Just could not believe it. I said, no, that's not my Julie. Just couldn't believe it. I cried, 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 that's all I done was cry. And I'm sitting here thanking God that that was a miracle. Oh, it's changed me immensely. I love when I, when I can tell people about what God done for me. Like, I guess so, I'm so grateful, you know, for what God done for me because I know I should be dead right now. I know I shouldn't be sitting here right now. I know I should be in the graveyard with my family going to see me because I was badly addicted to heroin, to tablets, to methadone, to everything. And I'm so grateful Jesus came and he radically, radically changed my life. I know what you have been watching has burdened your heart, but her story doesn't end here. Let's continue with her story and see how God was able to turn her life around. I thank God, you know, Victory Outreach came into this area and it's, it's so true what the mission statement says, you know, that we're, you know, every inner city of the world and this is the inner city right here is the inner city this is where all the drug addicts this is where all the alcoholics the lost and the bound and i'm so happy that victory outreach came into my neighborhood to reach me and my family and it's just it's brilliant you know i love the ministry of victory outreach julie fell in love with the lord and gave herself over completely to the things of god not only did god restore her life but he also restored her relationship with her mother. Today, they serve God together at Victory Outreach. And then my mom goes to church, so me and her go to church together. You know, we worship the Lord together, we praise the Lord together, and, you know, I can talk to her and tell her, you know, I'm sorry for all what I caused, but that's in the past now, so we got a good, a good future together as, you know, a daughter and, you know, mom. So it's a good relationship. We, we're best friends, really. Now she's a lady. When she was on heroin, she was like a wild animal. And I love her, I love her. But I, I used to hear her praying. And I say, that has to be God, you know, it has to be God. And then I start going to church. And then I understood. But I'm so proud of her now, proud of her. She loves God and she's happy with her husband, her two children. He's blessed my life with, number one, I have my life back when I had no life. And then my husband, I met my husband in the ministry. I met Julie uh, 14 years ago. When I came into Victory Outreach first, I came into the recovery home, a recovering drug addict. And I went to church one Sunday morning and I seen Julie on the worship team leading worship. And right then and there, God told me one day, she's gonna be your wife. I liked that sense of humour. I liked she was funny. I liked that she liked people. And I liked her because she had a little nose. She has a little nose and she has a little scar right there on her nose. And that, I always found that attractive about her. And then eventually we just fell in love with each other. Fell in love with each other and then we got married. Not only did they fall in love with each other, but together they answered the call of God upon their lives. He's a minister now, and I also have two beautiful children. Beautiful, such a blessing, um, Jordan and Shannon. And, you know, I have my family. You know, I always dreamed of having, you know, getting married, having a family, you know, just having a good life where I wanted to and what I believe God wants me to have. Before I came to know the Lord, I never finished nothing. I never graduated nothing. So I love that certificate. I look at that certificate and I thank God for that. And then as well, my husband, he graduated to recovery home. Before I came to Victory Outreach, I was a heroin addict. 
a crack cocaine addict. Uh, I lived on the streets homeless uh, for 15 years of my life, you know, robbing in and out of prison. And then I came into Victory Outreach. My husband's a minister and he's well, well known by the people on the streets. You know, he's, people know him by his first name. I'm just so grateful, so, <clears throat> just so grateful for God for touching me life, you know, for God rescuing me and, and setting me free and, and delivering me off drugs and giving me back my family, giving me back my daughters and everything that was stolen that the enemy took away, God has restored. He's given me a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids. So together, I believe God has put us together for the purpose of reaching people. That's their destiny. And I belong to something, something beautiful, you know. Victory Outreach is, it's the best, a Victory Outreach apart from God is the best thing that ever happened to me. Because we're really involved in ministry. We're involved in the street team. We're involved in the children's ministry. And we, we just love that. That's our life. Ministry, people, Victory Outreach, that's our life. I think this is only the start. I think this is only the start. I think God has, has more ahead for me and Julie. My passion is to reach people on the streets because when I was on the streets, people reached me. There was guys and girl, girls that came and passed me flyers and told me, Julie, God loves you. Julie, God cares for you. And they would love me. They would embrace me. And I never forget that. So in return, I want to do that for other people. I could not pass a drug addict by and not do nothing. I have to, you know, say hello or give them a flyer or tell them about God or, you know, do something. Because only for God, only for Jesus, I wouldn't be sitting here. And I'm so, so grateful. I'll be ever grateful for that. And the Ministry of Victory Outreach, of course. Victory Outreach is my life. Without Victory Outreach, I think I'd commit suicide over you. Who else is going to come into my neighbourhood and tell me, you know, God loves me, God can change my life, God has a plan? Nobody. So I love the Ministry of Victory Outreach. It's my ministry. She'd say, yes, please, no, please. Changed a whole, completely changed. She's like a different child born again to me. So I'm compelled, I have passion, you know, compassion to tell them, you know, they can change. There's hope. There's always hope. If there's hope for me, there's hope for them. Julie O'Toole is an example of someone who experienced not only God's miracle working power, but his love. Many times we have young people out there that are searching for love, and they search it in the wrong places. But Julie O'Toole found the real love and is found in Jesus Christ. When I look at her, I think about many miracles of young men and women that have come and have found the power of God delivering them and changing their lives. I remember my wife and I, when we started the Ministry of Victory Outreach, we had our recovery home. We were living in the recovery home and many men and women were coming in that were bound with drugs. And all we had was the, the love of Jesus and the power of God that was able to set them free. We didn't give them any medication whatsoever. We prayed for them. And what God did for us, we believed that he was able to do for them. We prayed for them, we were able to see the transforming power of God, the miracle working power of God, delivering them and setting them completely free. Julie O'Toole is an example of, of many, many that the Lord has set free. And not only does he set them free, but then he begins to use them. There's something about those that come from the streets. The Bible says, he that is forgiveth much, loveth much. And you can see the, the love within their hearts. In the very beginning, when they would come in, I would speak to them and tell them, you know, God is able to use you. And God gave me a promise that he was going to raise up treasures out of darkness. And these treasures out of darkness were going to go and give their testimony all over the world. And that has become a reality. There in Ireland, Julie O'Toole 
found Jesus, and not only did she find Jesus, but now God is using her right there in Ireland to reach many, many other drug addicts. You see, once you receive Jesus within your heart, you can't stay quiet about it, especially when you receive his miracle working power. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And we find that God is able to use us. God was able to use Julie. She found that not only did the Lord set her free, but there was a new anointing upon her life. There was a joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you can't keep it quiet. You got to go out and, and tell other people about it. We have experience in Ireland that God is moving by his Holy Spirit. We have a ministry right there, Victory Outreach in Dublin, Ireland. And many are coming and finding Jesus, the very same experience that Julie found. Many others are finding it in their own personal lives. This is why if you have a need within your life, God is able to meet that need. What the Lord has done for Julie and what the Lord has done for so many drug addicts, he's able to do for you. If you find yourself bound by, by heroin or whatever other habit you may have, I have news for you. There, there's hope for you today that Jesus is able to meet that need. Jesus is able to set you free. Maybe you've gone to doctors or you've been in different programs and nothing has worked. I guarantee that what God is able to do for you will work. I have a guarantee. We've seen it in so many others and he's able to do it for you. I want to say a prayer for you right now. And as I say this prayer, I'm going to ask you to open up your heart and let Jesus come into your life. As I pray, I'm going to ask you to do that. Say, Jesus, I receive you right now as my Savior. I receive you as my Savior, my Deliverer right now. I receive you by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer by faith and asked him to come into your life, then God has heard that prayer and he's come into your life. And what he's done for so many, many others, he's done for you right now. And you got to receive it by faith. Turn your back on that old way of living and begin to go forward in Jesus Christ. Get into a church, get into a Bible preaching church and get in there, begin to get into the word of God. And you'll see that not only is he able to save you, but he's also able to keep you. Well, once again, I want to thank you for tuning into the program and we'll be looking forward to seeing you real soon. May God bless you. I know at times life can be tough and we can experience extreme difficulty along the way. We're here for you and we care. And Victory Outreach is a ministry that reaches out to make a difference. If you or someone you know is in need of help, go to our website at victoryoutreach.org or treasurestv.org and we know that God is able to change anyone in any situation you may be facing. Find hope and victory today in Jesus.